What's up, Scrollgers? It's Nerp here, and today we will be spectating and commentating over the matches between Holofoil and Legrandon, which decide who will receive the prestigious ESL Avatar Head. The ESL All Stars 2015 is over, and the top four players were supposed to receive Avatar Heads, but Holofoil and Legrandon tied for fourth, so they now have to play in a best of three series to see who stays in fourth and gets the head. We are actually catching the second match of the best of three, but you expect it was turned off for the first. Legrandon won match one, so if he wins this, he gets the head, and Holofoil has to win the next two matches to get the head. Holofoil, a member of the Badger Guild, and Legrandon are both well-respected veterans in the Skrulls community. This should be good. Legrandon is playing Growth, and this is his starting hand. The game just started, and he does not have a 1-drop or a 2-drop, so I suspect a mulligan. I mean, he does have a nice curve uh, on turn 3, but yeah, he does mulligan. This time, it's a Probably worse starting hand because he doesn't have the five drop anymore, and he didn't. He wasn't able to chop like a one drop or a two drop, so he'll have to live with this. Though it's not a terrible starting hand. He is running Birth of the Wolf, which I don't run in my Aggro Growth deck, so I'm not sure what deck he's playing. He might be playing Aggro Growth, maybe playing uh, Licking Growth. Holofoil looks like a standard range energy build. Copper Automatons maybe has uh, a bit, maybe has a, it's a bit more heavy on Automatons. We'll have to see. Legrandon gets rid of uh, Crimson Bull, and next turn he'll be able to play Earthborn Mystic, and then a Birth of the Wolf the turn after. Holofoil is now going to be able to play a Gun Automaton this turn, which he does. He gets rid of the Machinated. Um, maybe he wants to keep that around because of the Stormrunner in hand, but the other creatures in hand doesn't really want to sacrifice. And now uh, Legrandon gets another Earthborn Mystic. Um, we'll see what he sacrifices here. He's going to play one of the Earthborn Mystics. So he goes ahead and plays that, gets rid of the Earthen Mirth, and... Legrandon's creatures are above 3 health, so he won't have to worry about burns, and Holofoil doesn't even have a burn in hand anyways. So now Holofoil gets rid of one of the Oculus Cannons, and he plays the Stormrunner, I suspect. Right there, and he goes down to engage Legrandon, wanting to take down that Mystic before he can start getting some draw. And now Legrandon actually top deck a Vetter, so he could play Mystic Vetter this turn, or he might just play Brother of the Wolf. Uh, he's gonna have to take some damage from this gun automaton, whether it be on the Earthworm Mystic or one of his other creatures. We'll see what he does. And this Stormrunner is a huge threat in the early game. Uh, it can really reach almost anywhere on the board, and I'm sure Legrand is very worried about that. So he gets rid of the Vetter for resources, and plays a Brother of the Wolf in front, wanting to get an attack off with this Earthborn Mystic. And their Holofoil top decks a Burn, which is really nice, even though nothing is able to be, uh, killed by a burn this turn unless you would, to, you would burn the brother wolf but i think he wants to wait until he gets a draw from that so he's probably going to keep it in hand he gets rid of the bombard something you don't see every day from a ranged energy player but the other stuff in his hand he needs to play this turn and uh, so it looks like he's going to play both oculus cannon and copper automaton so he plays it right in front and now if legrandon is going to move up to kill these uh these creatures, he's going to be hit by this Oculus Cannon. So Holofoil looks to be in a very good spot. Um, so it looks like Legrenon's best bet might be to abandon the bottom of the board and start building up somewhere else because he's kind of lost what's going on down here. The Copper Automaton plus the Stormrunner could very well just take whatever's out um, without much contest. So Legrenon most likely to play his 4-drop and uh, probably at the top of the board. Um, it might be wise for him to draw an enchantment from the Earthworm Mystic, no way it's going to die, at least you get a, a scroll from that. And um, then he, he could actually play the Earthworm Mystic, I think he should just spend his resources efficiently though and play the 4 drop this turn. So he actually, yeah he does play the Earthworm Mystic, Earthworm Mystic. so I guess he values the Earthworm Mystic um, basically as a 4 drop against Mono Energy Range. I would have kept the uh, Wetland Ranger. I would have played the Wetland Ranger and drawn a scroll from this because it might be an Earthen Mirth, and an Earthen Mirth uh, on a Wetland Ranger is against energy is pretty devastating for them. He drew a Stag Heart, and now Holofoil has a Machinated and a Burn. And will he get the board clear here? Sacrifices the Machinated for scrolls. No, he doesn't really need it this turn. And uh, he, the way these are positioned means the Copper Automaton is going to attack first. So, it's not easy for him to uh, do this. He could spark the Brother of the Wolf to be able to kill this with the Copper Automaton. 
Um, a burn would also get rid of these two. Or we could just see a boom reaper. You might save the burn and spark for another turn B as it's not. Destroying uh, Lagrandon's creatures this turn is not that urgent. So we might just see a boom reaper come out into play. He does decide to just get rid of this stuff this turn. So he's going to... Um, we'll see what he wants to do if he wants to get rid of the Brothers of the Wolf with the Copper Automaton or use the Storm Runner's Lobber. For the Storm Runner, he would have to move into the back, which isn't a good position for him. He's not really threatening stuff. Uh, but if he uses the Copper Automaton, he's wasting for idle damage, which he could get right now. So it will be an interesting choice. Does he want to move the Storm Runner into a less aggressive position, or does he want to uh, waste for idle damage? Holofield taking his time and he decides to keep the Storm Runner in a central position on the board and protects it with the gun automaton, knowing that veterans can come in and won't trigger the Oculus Cannon if they don't move. And now Legrandin uh, sacrifices for scrolls and he's probably going to play the Wetland Ranger this turn. He has a Great Wolf for the following turn and a Mangy Wolf Stagheart as a possibility uh, for the turn after. Or actually, even a Mangy Wolf Crimson Bull for the turn after. So I'm sure that is the plan, and a Rally in hand is always nice. So he's just going to try to build up towards the top of the board and hope Holofoil can't do so as well. Holofoil gets another Storm Runner. Potion of Resistance is really strong versus Growth, because Growth doesn't really have a way to get around it besides Rumble, which you haven't seen from the ground yet. Gets rid of the Boom Reaver, and we see a Scout Automaton. So it does look like this ranged energy deck uh, is a bit heavy on the Automaton side. Um, but it does seem like a more traditional range deck, not a full-on automaton deck like Donkey 74's deck. We see Storm Runners and stuff. Um, I assume Hired Smugglers and stuff like that. So Holofella moves into the center board. He probably feels safe because he plans on playing a Potion of Resistance this turn. Uh, what we could see is maybe a Scout Automaton in front and maybe a Potion of Resistance on that. He actually just plays the Potion of Resistance on the Storm Runner, uh, which is definitely uh, worth it as well. That's not going to be dying this turn unless we see like a double Ragged Wolf. And Legrandin has double Great Wolf now, so it might just be a good idea to just play those and hope they overwhelm Holofoil because he's not going to be able to destroy that Storm Runner uh, anyways. So if he's going to play the Great Wolf this turn, he's going to have to pay a place on the board where the Storm Runner can't reach, which the only places on the board he can't reach are down here and up here. Uh, but he might want to move his Walton Ranger into that space. So, and but then he does this other storm runner that's uh, crashing down. He has an opportunity to go ahead of Holofoil and resources and play Great Wolf, a nice big threat versus energy. So I suspect he'll draw an enchantment, knowing there's nothing for this Orthomus to really kill this turn. He gets another stack art, double stack art. Although energy has removal, it's still really nice for some really fast attack. And now I'm not sure what he's going to get rid of. He has a lot of valuable scrolls in hand. He gets rid of the rally, knowing he's a he's a great wolf to make these mangy, uh, he's a mangy wolf to make these great wolves attack anyways. So he moves him up, and he's probably going to play the great wolf somewhere. He could play it up here, but he plays it down there, knowing it's out of the range of the storm runner. The only thing in the range of the storm runner is now the earthborn mystic, which he can actually move up and spark. Now holofoil has some options in hand. He might want to ramp up to 5 energy this turn so he can play 2 scrolls, something combined with the Scout Automaton. Uh, I'm sure he's a bit worried seeing this Great Wolf, but this Oculus Cannon is currently locking that Great Wolf in position. Uh, so he might want to get more defense on this earth so the Great Wolf won't be able to kill this Oculus Cannon. And moving up uh, would be moving up to deal damage to the Mystic would be an interesting play also, uh, because he would have to move into this well and Ranger's attack range. This does have Potion of Resistance, but at only 3 health, it would only take 3 hits to get down. Um, it's going to be very, very, very difficult for Legrandon to kill this Storm Runner though. So I'm sure Holofoil is hoping for so another Machina to draw soon that can quickly go on this Storm Runner and hopefully take out something like the Great Wolf. So he is going to move up and deal 2 damage to Earthworm Mystic. We could see a Spark on it to get rid of it right away. Um, which would immediately decrease uh, the attack of anything that would become enchantment, enchanted. And uh, he moves up behind it, knowing that something behind a potion resistance unit is uh, pretty uh, safe. He gets the armor unit protecting this row and a gun automaton, so he doesn't feel the need to spark this just yet. I think I would have done that well. Holofoil playing the board very strategically and very well. 
And now Legranzin top decks a top decks a Wetland Ranger. He has the Grey Wolves on the side, but it doesn't look like he's going to be able to effectively effectively uh, kill Holofoil's units. He has just he's really threatening the entire board and making sure Legrand doesn't have an opportunity to break in. You can Mangy Wolf Crimson Bull, which would be which would be enough to kill this gun automaton, but then he's just uh, crashing off the Oculus Cannon. So he's just going to play Great Wolf in front there and hope that Holofoil doesn't have a way to kill these guys. But we know Holofoil has a spark in hand, so definitely one Great Wolf could die this coming turn. And then Legrand decides to hit the idol inside of the Potion Resistance unit, knowing he's a Mangy Wolf for both these Great Wolves next turn, although one is already attacking. But then there's a Mash Unit. That is a tough sacrifice, but he gets a spark anyways. Holofoil getting the draws he wants right now. So he's going to be able to spark. Uh, actually, it's not going to be possible for uh, Holofoil to to kill this Great Wolf this turn. This Great Wolf will survive, unfortunately, for Holofoil. But there's other scrolls in hand. He should be able to deal quite a bit of damage to Legrannon's other creatures. We'll see what he wants to do. He can move this uh, the gun on baton down until three damage to that and finish it off with a spark. The problem with that though is you lose a defending creature on this lane in front of the Oculus skin. He goes with the Fury. I wasn't actually considering Fury, but now I realize I think that was actually a good play by Holofoil. Because that way he can kill everything up here. And he can get rid of He plays the Machinated instead of the instead of the Spark. So he just wants to keep this working in. I guess they're both they both cost one scroll, and this this way he gets a nice big creature, which likely was gonna die this turn anyways. So now the Great Wolf will be able to attack, and a double stag heart would be enough to take out this Oculus Cannon. And that could be Legrandon's ticket back into the game. If he can just enchant this thing to really big with two stag hearts and just play he has two rallies and two mangy wolves in his hand. So this thing once it's really uh, really big, he's just going to be able to make it attack every single turn. This is going to be a one countdown Great Wolf that, what would it have, uh, nine health and eight attack? Uh, so I'm sure Holofoil just needs a Violent Dispersal to get rid of it. But once this Potion Resistance goes away, if he doesn't draw a Violent Dispersal, we could see Holofoil actually in a bit of trouble. He actually plays the Mangy Wolf, wanting protection and only one of the stag hearts. I would have preferred to see moving up and just getting rid of that, but this isn't too bad anyways, because he can also play the Mangy Wolf next turn, which would make this Mangy Wolf attack and the Great Wolf. And we see a Bombard and a Fury, so Holofoil has no shortage of Countdown Reduction in his hand. No way to actually destroy any of these creatures this turn, so we might just see a Cannonetta come down on the board. He moves down with his uh, Storm Runners, wanting to be able to pick off that Great Wolf before it does a lot of damage. And he might play the Kaneda up here to protect the Storm Runner from a veteran. That's what he does. He could have played it here to put more things in front of the Oculus Cannon. And now Holofoil... I mean, not Holofoil. Legrandon's in a tough spot. Uh, I mean, in theory, his plan could work, but there's no way of Holofoil destroying these two Storm Runners, which can just demolish anything on Legrandon's board. So, I mean, just a single Mangy Wolf would, actually, no, a Mangy Wolf and a Stag Heart would be enough to get rid of this Oculus Cannon and the Scout Automaton, but then he's putting himself in real danger of just getting obliterated by these Storm Runners if uh, Holofoil is imaginated or something, and I don't know, his, his guys might be destroyed by the Storm Runners anyways. Because the Storm Runners have such a nice attack range. He does play the Mangy Wolf. And he's going to move up. And we're going to see another Stag Heart. So this thing does have 9 health. which And only only one of the Storm Runners can reach it. So I'm sure Holofoil wishes he actually played the Spark on the other Great Wolf before. And not the Machinated. He saved the Machinated for one of the Storm Runners. And now he really hopes to find a Violent Dispersal or something. And nothing yet, and we know Legrand is going to be able to make this thing attack every single turn. So he's going to deal damage up there, and then this this Storm Runner is going to deal some more damage. And he might want to 
separate his units onto different rows knowing that great wolf is going to survive and there's a chance it could attack next turn which we know that it likely will because we can see legrandon's hand Hold of running corrode we don't you don't see that every day not many players run corrode it's a pretty it's a pretty cool scroll um will double your idol damage and you can make it into a cantrip if you destroy an idol it's hard to fit it into many decks though but i certainly like it so now Holofoil has five resources to play with, no real threat to play in this turn besides one copper automaton, so I'm sure he wishes he had some more creatures to play this turn, but you can't, you can't have everything. So he actually moves up with this uh, Stormrunner, so protecting it, he's only going to deal some damage to, uh, some damage with one Stormrunner. He plays a copper automaton, so that's basically telling Lagrannon, you can come up and kill my Canetta, but then you're going to have to face this Copper Automaton, which might be something that Legrandon wants to do. But then if Legrandon doesn't come up and kill his Canonetta, uh the Canetta can come down and kill him unless he moves away, which is sacrificed in the middle of the board. And now Legrandon has six resources, so he could go play a Rally plus a Nog or a Kinfolk Brave to get a lot of damage in. And uh, we could see that. We could see... I'm sure he doesn't want to put his units in danger... Um, knowing Holofil has a Bombard and a Fury in his hand, we could see Holofil destroying some creatures. And he does sacrifice the Nog for resources. It looks like we're going to see a Brave and a Rallying come down, which would mean a lot of attacking creatures for Legrandon. Right now we're seeing the Power of Stag Hearts. Uh, Holofil looked to be ahead in this game this entire match, but Holofil seems to be able to... Suddenly he has 7 growth, and Holofil only has 5 energy, and then uh, Legrandon actually has more scrolls. That's been a trend I've seen in energy the past couple of weeks. It feels like energy just makes good trades, but then they just end up not having the advantage over their opponent. I don't really know. I think energy might be slightly underpowered right now. It seems like growth and order are the best decks on the ladder. So Legrandon, thinking this through, and he plays the Brave. He is kind of... Alright, he just moved back, so he wasn't really... Set up for a big thunder surge. So he is going to take down a Stormrunner and the Kenonetta. So now there's going to be a Copper Automaton coming down. He has a Bombard. So the Bombard, he sacrifices for Scrolls. Blind Rage, we see Holofoil's running Blind Rage, knowing in this meta, Blind Rage is pretty valuable against Terran Brutes, Harvesters, Arbalestiers, uh, Solemn Giants. So Bone Rage is a pretty powerful spell. This turn might not be the turn to play it, though. He wishes he could actually play something with the Bombard. He could have played the Boomer if he sacrificed for, scroll for resources, but even that might not have been a super good play. So it's going to be interesting to see what Holofoil does here. He can He's definitely going to kill something with the Copper Auto. So he's going to move that down. That means the Stormrunner is not going to be able to move there, though, so we're not going to see, like, a... a uh, the, the Stormrunner attacking and destroying the Brave. So we might see just this dying and Holofoil taking a turn to build his board up. He might want to move up to get away from the Great Wolf's Path, but then you're surrendering the middle of the board to Growth, which already has dealt some the idle damage, which is a very risky decision. And uh, if Holofoil just put, decides to play Creature this turn, I'm not sure what he would do, the Akamaton or the Boomer. He does play the Blind Rage. So he basically played four costs to kill a two cost creature. And now Legrandon is out of rallies or mangy wolves. He does have a Kenfolk Veteran, but that's not going to be enough to destroy this Storm Runner. Which means Holofoil is going to have another chance to draw a Machinate, which would definitely put a hamper on Legrandon's day. So he might just play a th his third Great Wolf of the match. One was already destroyed. Or could play a Kinfolk Veteran to stop one of these attacks. It's going to be a tough choice. Either of them can be played with a Kinfolk Brave, so that's pretty good for Legrandon. Legrandon suddenly has so many resources, I didn't really realize that. He seems like he's playing a, an Aggroth deck similar to my Aggroth deck, except for he has uh, his Brother the Wolf in it. I'm not sure, but he doesn't have it compared to mine. So, maybe he doesn't have Rumbles. And there is a Kinfolk Veteran to get rid of one of the attacking creatures. And we'll likely see a Brave come down somewhere. And now I'm sure if Holofoil doesn't draw a Machinator this turn, it could mean the end for Holofoil. 
But if he does draw a Machinid, he is very much in this match. There is a Kinfolk Brave separating for a possible Thunder Surge. And there he goes. He's probably going to suck for Scrolls hoping for a Machinated, and he does not get it. He has things to combo with Bombard, but he simply does not have enough resources to do uh, very effective things. So now, Holofoil is going to have to kind of build his builds his board back up, which is kind of difficult looking at the board state. And there he goes. Holofoil actually surrenders, which means Legrandin is the guy that gets the ESL head. Uh, they'll, I'll put a picture of the ESL head on. Actually, I can just show you guys right now. The ESL head that Legrandin gets is. I have the ESL head from getting it from 2014 ESL All Stars. Uh, the head is. I think it's this way actually. There, that, that's the ESL head. So that's all Legrandin wins. As well as, whoops, um, the other, the top four of the ESL All Stars was Anti Rad, who actually won lat 2014 All Stars. Also, Ghost Bomb in second, Donkey 74 in third, and Holofoil and Legrandin tied for fourth. But now, Legrandin just beat Holofoil in their best of three, so that means Legrandin. Did, am I mixing up the names here? Legrandin is the winner, and he gets the head. So well played to both Holofoil and Legrandin. Legrandin ultimately winning out with his powerful enchantments and a very strong Great Wolf. So that'll be it for today guys. Like the video if you enjoyed and subscribe for more content. I will see you all next time. Keep on scrolling Scrollgers.